Well, good morning, everybody. Today we are going to do a taste of Turkey, a country I've just actually come back from on my last overseas trip, which actually is about 1,000 years ago. It feels so long ago. Um, so today we're going to do a few recipes that um, embrace the Turkish uh, culinary uh, tradition. And on my left is my sous chef and assistant, Portia. And um, she's going to obviously assist me in, in teaching you how to do this. And we're going to start off with our rice and meat kofta. Now, a kofta is a meatball, and it is a very, very important aspect of Middle Eastern cuisine. And wherever you go in the Middle East, whether you're in Lebanon or in uh, Istanbul or in Beirut or wherever you are, doesn't matter. Uh, Beirut's in Lebanon. Um, wherever you are. Uh, you will find kofta. They come on long sticks, they make chicken kofta, and it is a, a, a major feature. So I'm going to do a different type of kofta. I'm going to do a little kofta that are like rice and meat mixed together. And they have got an unpronounceable name which I can't uh, pronounce, so I'm just calling them rice and meat kofta. But they are a recognized uh, addition in the, in the cuisine of, of Turkey. And what we're going to do is have a look what we've got here. We've got our extra lean beef mince, we've got our chopped onion, we've got rice, we've got egg and breadcrumbs for um, coating them, and then we've got our cumin, our cayenne pepper, our chili flakes, flakes and our paprika, and um, obviously our chopped parsley which will go in as well. So what we're going to do, we're going to boil our rice as per the packet instruction. This rice has actually got lentils and um, black rice in it. So it doesn't really matter. If you've got normal old tastic, that's fine. And then what we're going to do, we're going to heat up a little bit of oil in our pan. This is a brand new pan. Hope it's a good one. Whoopsie. Okay. And we are going to add in half our mince and let it get, let me get the oil get a little bit warm first. I'm going to add in half the mince and let it cook for about five minutes so that it starts colouring and um, cooking. Now then I'm going to add my chopped onion and I will let it cook through so that it is um, fully, fully done. Okay, so oil isn't quite hot enough yet, but I'm going to add in half, so it's 250 grams, okay. And once that has become crumbly and cooked and, and slightly caramelized, then what we're going to do is we're going to add our onion, which we've chopped finely. And I always add salt and pepper when I cook, um, because obviously one needs to flavor food all the time. Now what I love about Turkish food, and that's why I always, I always do it every year, is that it uses a lot of basic ingredients and lots of the recipes are very very down to earth and normal and basic and that's what I like that's the type of food I like to eat and um, it is, is how's this pan going is it on yeah it's not, uh, it's not uh, making a noise heavy base it's heavy base okay it's not good. like a walk <laughs> okay all right okay I've got something in my eye um, anyway so what we're going to do once we've cooked this through we used to are uh, cooking with woks, where it's very thin based and it sizzles and cooks in one minute. But I found this today at Pick and Pay from Bauer. I think Bauer's an American make. And um, I thought, let's try it out. It's also sort of um, done stick and everything. But now sizzling, thank God. I love to hear a sizzle, okay? Yeah. So, what we're going to do once this is cooked through, we are going to add the mince our raw mince and, the, and uh, the rice to a bowl with our parsley, our spices, and then we're going to knead it all together and shape it into little round balls, roll them in egg, breadcrumbs, and fry. So it's a very, very easy recipe. What you can do is actually make the meatballs the day before and just leave them on a baking tray on your uh, on uh, 
baking paper and um, leave them in your fridge until you're ready to cook them. Because I would imagine, I mean, I'm sure they're very nice also sort of the next day, but it's nothing better than eating straight from the oven. There is um, a lot to be said for that. But now in go my onions. So it's one big onion. So let's say this big onion is three handfuls of onion. And just remember that onion actually is the one item in every cuisine in the world that forms the basis of every flavor. So wherever you go in the world, there'll be an onion or a shallot that is at the base of most dishes. So a little bit of that. And then I'm going to let it cool down. And when it's cool, I'm going to mix everything together. But let's just cook it up a little bit more. You'll find that when you cook bits, it um, becomes crumbly. So um, that's exactly what's happened. And obviously the onions are letting out a little bit of moisture, which is good. And this is actually a very nice pan. I'm highly impressed with it. It's the best. You like, you like it? I love it. I love it. Portia is my official meat taster because I haven't eaten meat since I was 18. So she is the meat gourmand of flavors of Susan and Greg, aren't you, Porsche? I don't believe I'm excited, I am. <laughs> Are you excited for the meat? When I see the meat? Yeah, she is. She's very really excited when she sees meat. I'm very really excited when I see chocolates, as you can see. Right. Okay, so let's switch that off. And I'm going to let it get cool. Now, the best way to cool something down quickly is to put it in another bowl that isn't hot. Okay, so let's put it in there. And in fact, if you're in a hurry, the actual best way to cool is to put it on a baking sheet because then it has got a wide surface area for heat evaporation, which is what we should be doing, but anyway, we're not. Okay, so I'm just gonna go like this and let it get cool. And then we're going to make a nice little kofta ball. Porsche, do you want to give me a big pot? A, a big bowl, rather. A big bowl. Okay, so these are the kofta. Now, what I've done with the kofta is that I've made a tomato relish called a Esme salad. Um, where is it? Turkish spicy Esme salad. I actually have made this once before in my Turkish courses at, at my real classes at, at the cooking school. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. So what we're going to do is I'm going to quickly make this while this cools down. I'm going to make the Turkish Esme salad and um, then we will come back to making the little balls. Now what this Turkish Esme salad is, it's a spicy salad of tomato, onion, garlic, green peppers, a little bit of lemon juice and some pomegranate molasses which is that wonderful sweet and sour molasses that you can get. Um, I think you can get it at uh, Woolies. But um, I buy it from Thrupps and if you don't know, if you can't get hold of it, phone me because I obviously know there's a fantastic um, Lebanese uh, wholesaler that brings in all these wonderful things. Look at all this heat escaping from this thing. So for this salad, what I've done is I've peeled my tomatoes and how you peel your tomato is that you get a tomato from sir and you just go like this crisscross on the back and you place it in a bowl of hot water and then you'll see that the skin just peels off terribly easy but you've got to start with that crisscross so that it lifts off okay so what we've done is we have um, peeled our tomatoes already and we've finally chopped them. And what I've done is I've actually put them over a bowl um, in a colander because in vegetables, although tomatoes are a fruit, but in vegetables and fruits, a lot of liquid is contained with where the pips are being held, like in a cucumber and certainly in a tomato. So you can see all that liquid, all that water, 
that has come out of these chopped tomatoes. I mean, it's, it's not as if you are denuding the tomato flavor because the flavor is still in the flesh, but you don't want it to be a watery um, salad. So that is why I have put it in a little colander so that all the excess water can uh, go. And then I'm going to ask you for that bowl, please, there, Porsche. So for the salad, it's terribly easy. Um, it is the following. The chopped tomato going in. Our chopped onion. I'm actually using a red onion. Yeah, I'd say that that's a red onion. Chopped green peppers. So apart from anything else, apart from the, the flavor, this is such a beautiful looking salad with the red, white and green. Okay. And into that, we're going to get a handful of chopped flat leaf parsley. Now whenever you buy parsley, um, I don't know why they still grow curly parsley because I absolutely hate it and it's got like a spiky, spikiness to it. That's why this Italian flat leaf parsley has become so popular. But um, what is so nice is that flat leaf parsley is now available everywhere. It was a, there was a stage where it wasn't. Okay. Now into this, we're going to put the following. We are going to put our lemon juice, tablespoon. Our two tablespoons of pomegranate molasses. There used to be a wonderful Turkish restaurant in um, Park Mall where you could buy all these wonderful deli items from Turkey in the Middle East, but they're not there anymore, sadly. Okay, so there's my pomegranate molasses. In Turkey, wherever you walk, there is another stand making freshly pressed pomegranate juice and orange juice. They are absolutely unbelievable. Okay, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. And this also can be made in advance because then the flavor will develop. You know, with the pomegranate molasses and the tomato and the lemon. And into that, I'm going to put some olive oil. And... Okay, so there's my olive oil and then I'm just going to mix the salad around and I'm now going to add my um, chili flakes which are here I actually bought these in Turkey okay I don't know how they are and some sumac and a little bit of dried mint now what is so nice about this salad is, oh there's my, my garlic, I need some sumac and some dried mint that are actually on the other tray. Okay, now what's so nice about the salad, and that's why I love Turkish cuisine, is that they really, here's my mint, um, they really enjoy uh, fresh ingredients and fresh crispy salads. So what you can do with this, you can eat it as an accompaniment to the um, kofta. There's my dog crying. <laughs> okay. And sumac is like a soury taste. A little pinch of sumac. And I'm going to let this... Um, Let this develop. If you want to give me a nice green bowl, we can put it into Porsche. Yes. And I'm going to taste it and see if it needs anything. Mm. So delicious and so fresh. And what you can also do is eat it with the flatbreads. So you can put a little bit of hummus on a flatbread with a little scoop of this, quite a nice bite, and um, eat it with your delicious kofta in a second.
Okay, so this is actually basically from heaven. And John, you can zoom in there. Here we go. So there is the wonderful Esme salad. I oh, hold on, we can put mint in it. I forgot about the mint. A little bit of dried mint on top. Now just remember with dried herbs, is that dried herbs are much more pungent than fresh herbs. So if a recipe says put in one uh, tablespoon of fresh mint, then you put in half a tablespoon of dried mint. The drying is much more pungent, so you've got to take that into account. Okay, now we've done the Esme salad. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my kofta, because not by now the meat is cooled. So, in here is going my cooked 250 grams of mince and onions. And then into that, I'm going to put how much rice? Five tablespoons of rice. Okay. One, two, I'm putting big tablespoons. Four, five, okay. Then into that, I'm going to put in the rest. So I'm going to put in this mince. something nice and green and fresh in it okay and my spices which consist of red pepper chili flakes oopsie paprika some cumin Some cayenne pepper. And we're going to mix this all together with our hands so that it's properly mixed up. So this is the best way to make them. Okay, I'm gonna just put a little bit of salt in course because my hands are now. Okay, a little bit of salt. Okay, not all of it. Goodness. Okay. Meat has to be tasty. Meat salt. has to be tasty. Okay. All right, Porsche. <laughs> I believe you. Okay, now let's get a baking sheet. So here is our wonderfully fragrant, flavorful um, kofta recipe. It's got the meat in it. It's got the rice in it. It's got the parsley. And it's got our chili flakes, our cayenne, our paprika. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make it into little balls. Yeah, push up. Okay. Make it into little balls. Like that. In, in Turkey, to be honest with you, they do oval balls like that. So maybe we should be authentic, push. Rather than round. Okay, so Portia's going to do that while I just wash off my hands and then I'm going to get the breadcrumbs and the egg ready for the coating.
Okay, so Porsche is getting those ready. I'm just going to start heating up the oil. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to place my bread crumbs, my panko crumbs. I always use these panko crumbs because they're nice and crispy. They're from Japan. But you can use Havana crumbs. And I also think that at, uh, at Pick and Pay and Shrups, they sell packets of fresh bread crumbs, which is quite nice. Okay, so they're my pankos. I'm going to just quickly whip up this egg. I'm worried about the dog. There's my egg. So it says here, heat your frying oil and then dip the meatballs into the egg and the breadcrumbs and fry until golden. But you've got to remember that a lot of this meat, or rather, not a lot, half the meat is raw. So it's actually better to cook it slowly so the inside gets cooked rather than burning the outside too quickly. So I would put it on a medium heat, definitely not a hot, hot heat, um, so that the meat inside the kofta gets the chance to um, cook as well. So now, how we're we going to do this is we're going to dip it in here, quick sticks, dip it in there, quick sticks. Not hot enough? Yeah. Okay, one. Two. You've got to be quite delicate with them because obviously they are um, a little bit soft still. And in fact, the best thing to do is once you've crumbed them like this and coated them in egg, is put them in your fridge on a tray for a bit to actually congeal in the fridge. That's first price. This pan is definitely going to take a lot of getting used to because I'm so used to everything, quick sticks getting hot in a wok, you know, which is very thin metal, that um, I'm not used to a thick bottomed pan. So, as I say, you can use these panko breadcrumbs or you can use normal breadcrumbs. Two more. with the hummus, with the um, esme salad, and your flatbreads that we're going to make. And um, it's absolutely the best meze lunch you can imagine. Okay, so those are the uh, kofta done. And as I say, it's better that you make these the day before. Cover them in cling film, put them in your fridge, and let them get um, firm. And the other thing I want to tell you is that when you're frying them, which Porsche is doing at the back now, only fry about three or four at a time. Because what happens is, if you put too many in your pan, it overcrowds it and lowers the heat of um, the oil, which is what we don't want. So rather do a few at a time and let them crisp up and get golden and get cooked inside. And obviously, when you um, finish frying them, place them on paper towel to drain off any um, oil. All right, guys, now we are going to do our Turkish flatbreads. And as you know, in Turkish cuisine, they eat flat peas, they eat flatbreads, and they eat, um, what they're called? <laughs> Those round things? Portia? Those round breads that they eat. 
Oh no, I'm oh, sorry, I've gone black. I'll come back to it. I've never been in Turkey. You've never been to Turkey? Okay, well, that's, we, better, we better change that. Anyway, I'll get back to it. Pita, pita breads. God, I'm going mad. Anyway, this is a very, very easy recipe. It's only got three ingredients. Two cups of self-raising flour, some salt and some Greek yogurt. So it's very, very easy to make. And one thing I must tell you about um, flatbreads is that you have to make them and eat them. So here is my cup measurement. So in here, just, just wipe this out. It's got a little bit of fluff on from the um, from the cloth. Okay, so here is two cups. Must be flattened cups, obviously. And actually, basically, okay, that's one cup. And that's another cup. Now, what I wrote on the recipe, guys, is that if you haven't got self raising flour, because I find that I more often than not don't have self raising flour and I've got to like rush out and buy it like I did this and what you've got to remember is that you can make flour obviously self raising by adding in some baking powder and some bicarbonate of soda so I've written at the bottom of the recipe that you can make if you only have plain flour you can make it by adding two teaspoons or three teaspoons of baking powder and half a teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda. So here is my flour. I'm going to add in my salt. And I'm going to mix it around. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in one and two thirds of a cup of yogurt. This is plain, natural Greek yogurt, I actually bought um, low fat. And the yogurt makes it so soft, you can't believe it. Okay, so two thirds is here, two of these. Hold on, I think this could be a third, let me just look. Oh, this is a third. Okay, so there are two of these for babies. Okay, one, two. I don't know if you need yogurt for something else. I didn't think I do. Okay, let's see, look at it. Okay, I'm going to mix this together until I have a nice soft dough. It is quite, it is quite soft. So when you roll it into balls, you definitely have to roll it on a very floured surface. I actually ate them last night with pea soup for dinner. It was so delicious, I cannot tell you. Okay, so these are perfect. You know, every time you use different recipes, a different, um, thanks Porsche, different um, makes of things, the consistency changes. So if you're using one type of flour and one type of um, yogurt, and then you change to using another type, you can't believe how the consistency changes. It's quite astonishing. So I'm gonna knead this slightly. Okay. And I'm gonna roll it into six or eight little balls. Okay, so it's very, it's very soft, but I'm going to put a lot of flour on my board. Let me just wash my hands. Hold on a second. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to put some of my flour on my board here. Quite, quite a thick covering. And... I'm going to take a ball and roll it in this flour so that it's more pliable and it's not sticking to my hands. Okay. 
So there's one. So rather don't add the flour to the actual mixture, rather just make the mixture manageable by rolling it in flour on your board. Okay? They're all different sizes. <laughs> Combining all the flour and the salt and the yogurt together. And then I'm going to get a rolling pin and roll them into flats. Okay, so here's my flat bread. Obviously you can make it any shape, you can make it round or oval. And, oopsie, we won't look at that. Go back together, darlings. Be a little love. <laughs> okay, come in close, Jono. And you will see that eventually they start getting a little bit bubbly and all right so here we are cooking our Black breads, we're waiting for them to get nice and dark on the one side. They're starting. And what I love about this recipe is that the yogurt makes them so soft. They are so delicate. And um, that's what's so wonderful about them. You can also make a, a mixture of melted butter and garlic with parsley in it and pour that over, which is quite nice. Unfortunately, there is, there is lots of flour in the pan. Won't you please pour past the, the baking, the, the paper towel? Because, because they're so soft, you have to have lots of, paper, uh, lots of flour in the equation. So every time you fry a new um, flatbread, you've got to just wipe out the flour from your pan. And it's dry cooking, it's, it's, you don't need any oil or butter in the pan. And it is just, obviously, unfortunately, it is a little bit uh, labor intensive in the sense that it's one, it's one flat bread at a time. Unless you've got two pans going. I think we should have. Okay, so now, guys, we are going to do the Turkish hummus plate with harissa, harissa roasted cauliflower. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to get a head of cauliflower and trim it into florets and you're going to put it in a bowl and combine it, that's one head, with some harissa powder, oopsie, that nearly broke, okay, two teaspoons of harissa powder, one, two, some olive oil, some salt and pepper, and some harissa paste. It is actually extremely, extremely flavorful cauliflower. Okay, how much here is the pace? One tablespoon, okay, well that's it. Okay, and we're going to mush these together. 
we are going to put them on a baking sheet and cook for about 20 minutes till the cauliflower is cooked through. Okay, it doesn't take terribly long. This is a real doggy lesson. There's puppy everywhere, isn't it? Okay. All right, so here is this delicious harissa paste. And we are now going to place this in an oven and bake it. Do you want to have a little look at that? It's got the harissa powder, the harissa paste, the olive oil, the salt, and the pepper. Okay, so that is going to go into an oven. Mati, can you just take it for me, please? Okay, right, then we're going to proceed to the next step. Okay, so that's the first step of the, of the, of the dish. And the second step is to make the hummus. So what we're going to do, we are going to, in a, 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 a little pan of a medium heat, here's a little pan, we're going to melt some butter and we're going to add our crushed garlic. So it's a tablespoon of butter, there that is, and some crushed garlic. Um, garlic crusher. So we're going to crush two cloves of garlic into this. And this is just a slightly different way, oopsie, of making hummus. Not your usual way, which is quite nice. It's a very small bud, bulb. Okay, and go with another one. And Let's foam this up and cook the garlic. Um, when you cook the garlic, it obviously makes it less pungent because uncooked garlic is very, very strong. So this is nice foamy butter. Oh, it smells divine. With this cooked caramelized garlic in it. Okay, so I'm just going to leave that there just to meld in flavor. Unbelievable. Okay, so we've set that aside. In a magic mix, we're going to combine our lemon juice, our tahini, And pulse until it's slightly whipped up. Okay, so to peony, two tablespoons. And you can actually get to peony from every single uh, greengrocer. They all have they all have it. But as I say, if you have a problem getting it, just give me a ring and I'll uh, tell you where to go. And how much lemon juice is it? Juice from half a lemon. Okay, well that's going to be a judge. Mental thing. Okay. So, I'm going to just rip these two up together. In my magic. It's a bit light and fluffy. And then I'm going to add my chickpeas. So that's nicely combined. I'm going to add my tinned chickpeas, my garlic butter, and salt and pepper. A little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, and I'm going to add this wonderful mixture of butter and caramelized garlic. Any of the garlic because I absolutely love garlic okay so um, 
and we're going to process until a smooth <coughs> paste is formed. into it the other tablespoon of butter which I'm now melting obviously it has to be melted to go into the sauce into the hummus and my yogurt and uh, two tablespoons of Greek yogurt perfect how perfect is that that we've got exactly two tablespoons left okay so in here goes my two tablespoons of Greek yogurt scraping it together Okay, so you can make the hummus, see what's happening here? You can make the hummus and the flatbreads from one of those tubs of yogurt. Okay, so that's going to go in now as well. Okay, so in goes this. Was this up? And then I'm going to slowly drizzle in my olive oil. from heaven. It's got that caramelized garlic undertone. Um, and I have that flat platter um, with the leaves, the leaved flat platter piece. So this hummus, I can tell you right now, is literally dreamy. And what we're going to do is the following. We are going to toss the spinach, the baby spinach here, I've got it here, um, with some lemon juice and olive oil. And I'm going to spread the hummus on my platter, like this. This will be the best hummus you've ever tasted. Because it certainly is the best hummus I've ever tasted. Okay, so this is underneath. Let's just get those away. Okay. Here is the under of my plate. Let me just go like this. Mm. Ah! The best. Then, what I'm going to do is I'm waiting for my cauliflower to cook. And then I'm going to toss these leaves in olive oil, lemon juice, and um, some uh, salt and pepper, obviously. So let me do that quickly. Let's get some olive oil, just very plain, some nice fresh lemon juice, some salt and pepper. And I'm just going to gently toss these. And I'm going to put them on top. These are wonderfully flavoured. Baby spinach is always available. So you put it so that you can still see the, um, the 
the edge of the hummus. And then we are going to wait for the cauliflower to come out and um, put it on top and then we're going to sprinkle with some za'atar powder which is also a um, Middle Eastern spice that you can get at most places now but if you can't get, uh, if you can't get it uh, at your local spa or pick and pay there is a wonderful shop in Emerentia in Johannesburg called the uh, uh, Spice Emporium or Eastern, Eastern Temptations or something like that. And they um, have a um, wonderful selection of every single spice you could ever wish for in your life. So that is the place to go, Eastern Temptations. And um, they will definitely be able to um, assist you with the zatar. So the zatar is going to come and I'm going to put a little bit of a of um, uh, chopped flat leaf parsley and I always do a little bit of a drizzle of oil just in case it needs a little bit of a shine and that's that dish. So we've done our flatbreads, we've done our wonderful esme salad, we've done our little kofta the last thing of the day is this wonderfully fresh salad, which is a uh, roasted halloumi and citrus salad. Now, as you well know, halloumi is the best. It is just the most delicious thing. So, Porsche, if you could bring me that tray. Okay, so what we're going to do with this now is the following. We're going to preheat our oven to 200 degrees and we're going to place some oil in a non-stick frying pan and fry the halloumi on two sides so it goes that wonderful golden colour. We then are going to place the pan in the oven and bake for another 18 to 20 minutes until the whole block of halloumi is gooey. Now we need it in a, in a pan that can go into the oven. I don't know whether you've got one of those things here. Has it got a metal handle? So what happens is normally you... Um, when you go to a restaurant, a Greek restaurant, a Turkish restaurant, you have sliced halloumi and um, they fry it on all sides. Here what we're going to do is um, fry it on three of the sides so that they get, get a wonderful golden colour. And then we're going to place the whole thing on a baking uh, in that pan on a baking sheet in the oven. And we're going to let it bake so the whole thing becomes gooey. And then it's placed on a platter with all this wonderful citrusy, nutty, minty uh, rocket and uh, baby spinach around it. Okay, so what I need is a pan. And here's my olive oil for my olive oil for frying. It's here. And what I did today at uh, Pick and Pay, I found these little kumquats, which... Um, I'm certainly not going to be eating them because they don't look very flavorful. They look a bit dried out. But I'm going to add them for as a garnish for um, my salad today. So it's very easy. You're just going to cook your halloumi cheese and then you're going to place the leaves on a platter, top it with the warm cheese, sprinkle with the citrus segments, the pistachios, the sumac, the chili flakes, and a grinding of salt and olive oil. So, my sumac, Porsche, I need my sumac, which is here. Mm -hmm. Here's my sumac, and my red chili flakes. There they go. Okay, so is this, is this not on? It's hot. It's hot. Cool. Okay, let's put a little bit of oil in. So it's a very, very easy salad, but as you can see, it's got wonderful flavors. It's got the um, citrus and the oregano and the rocket and the pistachio. So it really is a wonderful combination. Let's let this get a bit hot. And then we're just going to get it golden on a few sides. And then we can get the platter, Mum. Yes, which one? Okay, so another green platter, and we are going to um, put the other salad, part of the salad together, and at the end we'll just put the 
So here's a wonderful oval platter. And onto it, I'm going to put, I bought this um, Italian rocket today. I absolutely love it. I find it so sculptural. So there's the rocket leaves. Then we're going to do the baby spinach leaves. Okay. And onto that, we are going to put our citrus segments. Now in here I've got two oranges and one grapefruit. So you get a citrusy flavors. Okay. And onto that, I'm going to sprinkle some sumac, some chili flakes, a little bit of chili flakes, a little bit of sumac, which is a bit of citrusy sour spice, and some slivered pistachio nuts. I mean, how are the colors? Zoom in here, John. I mean, these colors are off the charts, they're so beautiful. And I'm going to top them all with my little clementines. And what I'm going to do, which I haven't written in the recipe, but I'm going to add it in before I send it to you, is that you've left here with a little bit of orange juice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little bit of a salad dressing with this. And pour it over the um oh god is something's happening a push i need a lifter oh pieces okay well that definitely didn't get one bit golden okay so i need a i need a whisk okay so i've got sumac olive oil da 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 Fresh oregano. Okay, so here I've got fresh oregano from my garden. And I'm going to put a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, and I'm going to whisk this up. And this can actually be the dressing of the salad. I might need a little bit of honey in this Porsche. Let me just double check. I need a little bit of, um, put too much salt in. I don't know why this isn't, it's got obviously got too much liquid in it. I don't know what's going on with this khulumi. Not all khulumis are equal. Yeah, maybe. Okay, so I'm going to put a little bit of sugar in here, a little bit of honey in here. Just a drop. Literally a drop. Okay, so here's this wonderful emulsified dressing. And let's just put it in the oven, Porsche. When it's when it's a little bit uh, it takes a long time for those pans to get hot, doesn't it? So we're going to place the halloumi here with a little um, snippies on top. And I love halloumi cheese. It is so gooey and delicious. And it is a real Eastern European, Eastern Mediterranean treat. So basically, in a nutshell, guys, what we've done is we've done our pasta, which are in the oven. And I'm going to take them out in a second and show them and put them on a platter for you. Uh, then we've done our flatbreads. We've done our Izmi salad. And we're just waiting for our cauliflower to put on top of the hummus salad. And then we are going to um, Okay, here are our little kofta koftas. 
So I've sent you your recipes and um, okay, let's put those on top there. I've got a bee next to me, which is a good thing, isn't it? And um, those look wonderful. We'll put some parsley and uh, the bees coming after the fruit, the citrus fruit. Um, but the colours, the orange and the pinky and the chilli, the red chilli and the the pistachios create such a beautiful look for the salad and it's nice because the cheese is quite rich so it's cut with the citrus dressing obviously and let's just put some green on top okay, so here are pasta Absolutely divine. I'm going to put a sprinkling of mold and salt on top. Okay. Then I think our cauliflower might be done. Yeah. Is it? Oh, pretty well done. In fact, so well done, then you burnt. A charge. Charge. Charred offerings. Okay, so those are going to come now. Okay, so here are our burnt offerings. They're not charred. They're charred. Okay. Actually, I love charred food. Mm. To be honest. Okay, obviously first prize is to put them on your salad when they cool, but we haven't had that first prize today. So here's your harissa flavoured um, How stunning does this look? With a little bit of za'atar. Which is basically thyme and sesame seeds. So you've got all these wonderful flavors, all these layers of flavors. And I'm going to put a drizzle of olive oil on this. And then we're going to drizzle a wonderful citrus dressing over our halloumi salad. So here we have our halloumi salad, our kofta, our esme salad, our delicious, I can't wait to dig, dig into it, a hummus with the uh, griddled, um, what do you call it, cauliflower, and our flatbreads at the back that are still wonderful and soft and pliant. And I'm going to scoop up a little bit of hummus. Mm. Try it right now. The best. Thank you for joining me, everybody. And I hope that you... Have a wonderful Father's Day and that um, we see you again next week. Thank you.